Hello, I am Drew Weber with Race Day Engineering. This is an instructional video for a useful tool when creating your network logic diagram or NLD. This tool can also be used to create many other diagrams and flowcharts, but for our purposes, we'll be focusing on network logic diagrams. Okay, to start off with, what our tool is called, it's called YEd. We're going to need to download this, and this is done pretty easily. If you just start off by going to Google, typing in YEd, just like this, it should be the first link that comes up. You're just going to want to click on that. Once that loads, click right on this Download Now button, and it'll give you your different download types depending on your operating system of your computer. For most, I would say we're going to be using Windows. So you need to click on that, run the installer, accept it, have it installed, and then you'll be good to go. Okay, now that you've installed the YEd tool, I'm going to show kind of an end product based on what we have done in our project for what your NLD can look like. So here's the most zoomed out. We can see we have different colors of these boxes. These represent the different kind of tasks such as hardware, software, documentation, all the others. If we zoom in, we can see that we have each of our little blocks with our six areas to place our numbers for your forward and backwards pass. We also have our project start as well as all of our connecting arrows. So this is kind of what the end goal should look like. We can also see that we have a highlighted red line. That's to indicate our critical path. You can do many other things to indicate your critical path depending on what you prefer. You can put a red border around the box. Many different things. All right. Now that I've shown you a general overview of the NLD, I'm going to start to show you how to create this yourself. The very nice thing about this tool is that you simply have to create a single one of these boxes here, and you're able to copy and paste it multiple times and simply edit the information inside to match what you need to have there. So to start, we're going to have to go to a new page, and then I'm just going to show you based on how we created ours. There's also, you can experiment with the different shapes and get whatever kind of uh, style you prefer. But for this purpose, I'm gonna show you how we create it. So to start off with, I go over here to Shape Nodes, and I grab this rectangle. Once you click on that, you're able to adjust the sizes and shape as much as you want. I'm just gonna make it into a long rectangle. Next, I'm gonna grab one of these blocks from the flow chart. You drag it over the exact same way, and then I'm gonna simply create a square with that. This is what our numbers will be going into. So once I do that, and if you ever get these lines, sometimes if you drag and click, just hit escape and it'll go away. And so you click on that and you can drag it. And so this has this nice tool where snap lines, that should level everything out, make sure your edges match. So that's very nice. So now that you've created one square, you can just simply copy that. You can right click copy or you can just hotkey control C. And then you can right click paste or hotkey hotkey control V, which is what I'll be doing throughout this video. So once you do that, you just want to line that up with that, copy, paste in a third block, and then you have that. So once you do that, I would just drag this to match. This probably doesn't need to be as long. So now that we have that, we can simply copy all three, and then paste all three, and then drag this down to the bottom. So this is the start to our block, but this is the easy part. We have to change a lot of this so that whenever you format it later, all the changes stay with it. So to start off with, what you're going to have to do is these are all what are called nodes at the moment. And the two things in this program are nodes and labels. And you're going to want all of these to be labels so that the editing that you do sticks with it even whenever you change anything else. So everything's going to be based around this block. So to start off with, in order to change this label, right click and you can see that convert to label is grayed out, so you're not able to do that. How are you supposed to do that is to, you have to actually drag it onto another node and you'll see that it's popped back up. So you can hit convert to label and then what I always do is I go into properties and then distance. I change that to zero. This is just to make it so that you can drag it to where your edges line up again because with that four you're going to have a small discrepancy where it just never lines up right. So hit apply, OK, and then you're able to drag your block back out. And you can see it fits, and you can see up here in the overview of that block, 
it's gone from the picture. This is just because we've now created it as a label. So now you need to repeat that for all six of these blocks in order to create, convert them to labels so that it stays with the editing. Okay, so now that you've done that, you can see all six boxes have been changed to labels. This means that they're all labels for this center node, and that's shown in your overview is you only have a center node. Even if you try to select it, it only selects the center node. Now you're going to want to create labels for this again that will go in the center of each of these boxes so that you can type in the numbers for your forward and backwards pass. To do this, you do right click, add label. You can just kind of type in a number to hold it right now, and it'll show up whenever you click off. You can double click on that, and I'll go into edit mode, and you click off again. You'll see it has this white box. This means that you can now freely move it anywhere. So you can just hold, like, click on it and drag it, and hold it, and these snap to grid lines will show you the center of the box, and that's very helpful. So you just need to repeat that for all six of those boxes. So now you've done this, you can see that each of our boxes have this centered number. You can then later on just click, double click into it and you'll be able to edit to whatever the numbers you need to enter for your forward and backwards passes. Okay, the last step for creating a single box is you need to add your label for in here to define your activity as well as put the number such as we have on some of our blocks. As you can see, we have like communication connectivity 1.1.5.4. So the way I like to do this is I like to create two labels. And I do this because if you create just one label, sometimes it doesn't format correctly because everything wants to go to the center of the box. So say we have alpha enclosure. If you try to hit enter to go down the next line to put your numbers, that's just going to center it. So what I do is I usually have create one text box that I drag up a little bit. Again, you can use these lines to ensure that you're in the center. And then I add a second label, which will let me put in whatever number for the task that it is. Once I click off, it'll do that. So you can then double click into either of those and drag them uh, up or down, depending on how much information you have. But that is essentially how you can create a single box where you can just simply edit all the information to match what you need. Now that you're at this point, it's very quick to simply if you just select the whole block you can just do your control C to copy and control V to paste and it will copy that whole thing and you just drag it where you need to and it will align it which is nice um, so as an example I'm just gonna copy a whole bunch in here so as you can see it's showing me those grid lines of exactly where I need to center everything so let's just say that this is my NLD right now. And also another helpful button is this button right here, show entire graph. That'll essentially just center everything, zoom perfectly. So now you've gotten to this point, you've created your boxes, you need to start connecting them with uh, arrows in order to show which boxes go into which other ones. So to do this, you simply have to click and hold on one and drag right to the center of another. And so for right now, it looks bad with that arrow like that. That's not what you want, but a later formatting tool is going to pretty much take care of that for you. So just all you need to worry about is just drag arrows where you need them to be. Let's just say they go like this. So as you can see, I got arrows going everywhere, but I've created all my boxes. So the last step, once you've created all your boxes, edited your information, and connected them to the correct areas, simply go up to this layout tool. They have all sorts of different types of layouts you can do. You can play around with it to get your favorite. We simply did BPMN. This, we found, gave us the perfect one. Uh, I changed this minimum node distance to 60. You can kind of play with that as well. Some of the other distances to ensure that like your blocks are a certain amount away from each other. I felt like the default of 30 that was here made the box way too close. So once you've kind of messed around with that, figure out what you like, you simply hit OK. As you can see, it orders them how it thinks it should be best. All your arrows are at 90 degree, perfect, nice, clean. So this is how you can do that. Um, one last thing as well. Um, so as you saw before, we had different colors inside of our boxes for the different
types of tasks that we'll be performing. So in order to change this, say that you want to do like yellow for hardware, you simply just go over to this fill color. Once you click on the block, you can go to these basic colors, click more. They have different types of color palettes that you can go through. You can choose a specific color that you like, just say yellow. So I click OK, and it changes just that block. So that's nice. Lastly, in order to do the critical path line, if you want, let's say this is your critical path right here. You simply click on that. What we did is just a red to indicate critical path. And then you can click on this line type and make it really thick if you would like. Let's kind of show that. So change that color. So as you can see, that kind of, <coughs> excuse me, is a nice indicator of the critical path of your project in relation to all your other arrows. Like I said, you can go through and maybe put some more blocks behind others in red to kind of outline it. There's a whole bunch of different tools and different kinds of blocks you can do to play around with. This is just how we created ours, but this is a great tool for quickly organizing your NLD based on the most simple connections that you know have to be there. So that's it for this instructional video. I hope that this showed you exactly everything that you would need in order to create your own network logic diagram, make it real clean, real nice, and much quicker than you would with perhaps sticky notes or Visio. Thank you.